Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about storage. And by the end of the video, you're going to have an idea on how much you can earn monthly with storage, how hard is it to maintain storage nodes, and within what time frame you can expect the return on investment. So without any further ado, let's begin. So storage is this new platform that came out in 2019. I mean storage version three, actually. So if you don't know what the storage is, storage is a S3 compatible object storage running on top of blockchain. All data is encrypted, no one has access to it, but you and only you with your private key can unlock the data. Admins at storage cannot unlock your data at any circumstances because they just don't have the key. So it's basically like with Bitcoin, if you lose your private key, you lose your coins. But in this case, you just lose your data. We're not going to talk about how great of a storage platform the storage is. Today, we're going to have a look at the hosting part. And anyone having the tech knowledge like you and me can become a storage node operator. It's free of charge. And the only thing you need from the storage team is the access token which you can get by going to storage.io sign up node operator, just mark all of the fields here, click continue, enter your email over here, and they're going to email the key over to you. So let's look at some hardware requirements. First, you need at least one processor core, 550 gigabytes of space on your hard drive, two terabytes of available bandwidth per month, minimum five megabits per second of upload speed, minimum of 25 megabits per second download speed, and only five hours of downtime monthly. Apart from all of this, you're also going to need about two gigs of RAM. And coming back to bandwidth requirements, I don't recommend running storage node on a very slow internet connection, because it's going to choke. I tried doing it with my ADSL line. And it wasn't great, let me tell you. Sometimes I couldn't even watch a YouTube video. So if you don't have at least around 50 megabits per second of upload and 100 megabits of download, I wouldn't recommend running the storage node off your home internet. The storage node software is running inside of Docker container. So it's effectively cross platform. But Linux is the most preferred operating system to use here. And I'm using Debian 10 running on top of FreeNAS at the moment. Don't forget that you're going to need to open up some ports on your router. And they have a pretty good explanation over here how to do it, what ports to open, things like that. After all of this is done, you're going to need to generate the storage wallet address. And on their website, they have a list of supported online portals where you can sign up for one. Then when you get your authorization token, um, download this piece of software, which is called Identity Linux AMD 64 or ARM 64, whatever your platform is, download that piece of software from GitHub, run it and it will generate your private key that you can use inside of a storage network. I'm not going to show you how to do it step by step, you can figure it out on your own with the instructions they have on their website. But I will share some information that they don't give you on the website. For example, a bash script that will automatically download a freshest version of the storage Docker container and run it when VM starts, it will also attach the watchtower Docker container to your running storage instance. So whenever there is an update, Watchtower will automatically restart storage Docker container, download a new one, update it and start it back again. So I'll share all of that down in the video description. Now you have your node up and running. What's next? Well, this is the dashboard of one of my VMs with um, storage running inside of it. It's rather small, it has only one terabyte of disk space. And this month, I've shared 500 gigabytes of storage with storage network. I've been running this service for about six months. And so far, my earnings are 2966, which is not bad, but it's nowhere near what storage suggested it to be. 
And actually, until about a month or so ago, they had a storage node estimator where they will show you how much you can earn monthly with storage. And if I'll say it was greatly exaggerated, it would mean nothing. They gave me estimates of something like $150 from my one terabyte VM per month. I didn't expect it to be that. I expected it to be around three times lower, but I'm earning about $10 a month from it, which is more than 10 times lower than what they projected. And as you can see, the page is now down. They probably received a very negative feedback from the community and they decided to take it down. And I just regret one thing at the moment that I didn't take a screenshot of what they were showing me. Nonetheless, let's move on to my other machine that has 5.3 terabytes of space sharing with storage network. And this month, I've shared around 1.25 terabytes of storage with storage network. And for that, I received around 2595. But even these numbers you shouldn't expect when you start running the storage node. Because here I have a spreadsheet open with how much I earned each month during last six months of running storage. And the idea is that you first accumulate the data and only then you can share it. They pay you very little for the actual storage space, but they will pay you much more for the bandwidth that you use to share the data or the bandwidth that you use to repair other nodes data. And they also have something called held amount of money, which I'm going to explain in a second. Let me just go through the spreadsheet first. So on February, um, I received seven cents because it was the first month and I didn't have any data to share. On March, I received 492. I think that's due to their promise that they could going to come out of beta, which they didn't at that point. Um, and people started using their service extensively. At least that's what I think. In April, I received about a box. In May, around $2. Then June, 246. And then July, 695. That's all from one terabyte VM. And they held back 2965. Which again, I'm gonna explain what's the held amount just in a second. Let's look at the 5.3 terabyte VM. Um, first month is very similar to this one. I received nearly nothing just because there was no data to share. In March, I received $5. In April, $4. In May, $6. Then June, again, $6 then July 1441. So I think the more network is maturing, the more money you can expect from it. And my total at the moment is 3661. Okay, so let's cover that held amount. When you're running storage note, storage guys will keep your money in their pocket for safety reasons. And this mechanism is out there to ensure that you're not going to leave the network prematurely. For example, first three months, only 25% of the revenue will be paid to you. Month four to six, 50% will be paid to you. And month seven to nine, 75% will be paid to you. Then month 10 through 15, you will receive 100% of your payments. And on the 15th month, they will give you back 50% of the withheld amount back. So that's basically how that works. With that covered, I have another table that will show you how much money you can earn in that 15 month with one terabyte VM and 5.3 terabyte VM. So in six months, as with my example, I'm receiving 695. Then after six months, I'm going to be receiving around $9 per month. And then next four months and onward, I'm going to be receiving around $13 per month. And in 15 months, that adds up to $86.19. That's without a withheld amount, which is at the moment 
And here I have the formula that divides this number by two and then adds them together for the joint result. And you see the target for ROI over here and you're probably wondering where it came from. Well, I put together a list of parts that you basically need to run a very bare bones installation of storage node. So to run this six terabyte part, um, we're gonna have Raspberry Pi, four model B, four gigabytes, Seagate Barracuda, six gigabytes, that's a hard drive, um, Raspberry Pi, four model B power brick, and Ugreen SATA 3 to USB 3.0 to power on the disk and use it with Raspberry Pi. And all of it come up with a total of 203 pounds or $265. And one terabyte parts will worth you 108 pounds or $149. And you are saving some money with the one terabyte parts, but you will be earning much less. Although the ROI is actually gonna be the same, because if I come back to the projection uh, page, you can see that I'm earning $14 in six months, then $18 in nine months, and then $26 over a year. And again, all of that after running it for 15 months will come up to $224. So the parts for one terabyte build are $141. And you're gonna earn only 115, which leaves you with a difference of $26. And I'm not including the time you wasted on the setup and things like that. I'm not including the time where you're gonna need to replace the part which broke. And I'm not including the price of electricity just because you're gonna be running it in different parts of the world. So you will need approximately 17 months just for your investment to come back. Another few things I wanted to point out um, are your storage wallet. You're gonna receive your coins every month. And last time I received 53 coins for my uh, one terabyte VM and 113 coins for my 5.3 terabyte VM. If you like to hoard coins, you have a good chance of receiving much bigger reward than you originally had. For example, last month, the exchange rate was 0.19. And then this month, the exchange rate is 0.27. Last month, I had around $30. And this month, I didn't receive the money yet, but my balance grew by $16. And that's purely due to the fact that the exchange rate grew significantly since last month. Now, in the end, do I really recommend to run storage at your house on your equipment? Well, it's kind of complicated. If you already have a spare hardware at home and nice, reliable and fast internet connection, I say go for it. You are running your equipment anyway, and it's not gonna add up to your electricity bill, and so you will benefit from it. But on the other hand, if you wanted to go out and buy some equipment to run storage and earn some money, I would probably not recommend that because return on investment is just too far off from what it could be. And that's just my honest opinion on all of this. So what do you think about it? Do you agree or disagree with me? Please leave your questions, comments, or thoughts on all of this down below. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the subscribe button. Consider donating to a channel if I just saved you a fortune. That's it for now, and I'll see you in the next one.